Thank you for listening and welcome to the Life Podcast, a proud member of the Eventide Entertainment Podcast Network. I'm your host, Don Smith. Actor Scott Summit is in the studio for the first time this week. We talk about movies and filmmaking in the state of Ohio. After the break, musician Tyler Carson joins us to cover some news stories. If you enjoy the show, like and follow the Life 1069 on Facebook and Don Smith Comedy on Twitter. Or tune in live on Wednesdays from noon to 2 p.m. on WWSU 106.9 FM. Or you can stream the show live at WWSU1069.org. The brutal presence overwhelms me. The brutal presence overwhelms me. All right, it is, uh, we, we almost missed it. Almost missed it. It is Wednesday. Uh, it is just afternoon. Uh, this is the Life Radio Show. I'm your host, Don Smith. Uh, back for another uh, for another fun filled episode of nonsense. I got to adjust my mic a little bit because I feel like I'm le- I feel like I'm leaning over the desk right now. And no, you don't work for the mic, me. Don. Make the mic yeah. work for you. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so feel like feel like somebody's going to walk up behind me and pinch my butt or something. <laughs> while I'm saying, <laughs> I, I I have to I have to rant real quick about the week I've been having. It all started Sunday. Uh, Sunday I went into work. I work in a uh, local uh, medical facility. Uh, with a bunch of people that I'm, as a, as a maintenance man in a medical facility, you go into any department, you are automatically greeted with, uh, with hostility and just, <laughs> just attitude right off the bat. Why haven't you fixed that? Well, uh, Sunday I'm there for a specific purpose, purpose that doesn't involve salting the parking lots. So I, I go in, I'm, I'm running the generators. I'm doing what I'm there to do. I'm walking around checking things. And this is like through two, uh, two and a half hours after the fact that this nurse apparently fell in the parking lot. So she comes up to me screaming, why haven't I salted the parking lot yet? Which we've already called the grounds crew to have them out to do it, which I told her. And keeps keeps going. And I'm like, well, they're on their way. They'll get here when they get here, you know. And uh, so, <laughs> so Monday I get called into my boss's office because the first thing this person does is calls my boss's boss. And basically I'm, I'm, I'm left to explain why I said, and as I was quoted by this nurse, that's not my effing job. So (laughs) I really hope when she fell, it hurt a lot. (laughs) Oh boy. (laughs) Because there's nothing worse than first you get greeted by the attitude and then they lie about what you say when you respond in basically I'm not allowed to respond in any way that might imply that I deserve some kind of uh human decency or or to be talked to in some some form of respect like I am another human being mm. rather than a dog that just pooped on the floor because that's basically <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's not a good position you know, to be in, man. Yeah, right. As, as soon as I walk in there, they're like, oh, let's grab him and rub his nose in it and say, why isn't this, you know, why did you do that? Why did you do that? No, nah, bad boy, so, bad. <laughs> <laughs> so I am job hunting now. I, I <laughs> Just just to get out of there. Anyway, uh, yeah, that was it was so much fun. Well, anybody who'd pick you up. Just, that was just the beginning of, of the week because oh, also uh, the comedy club, I've, I've also found out that we've been upgraded in our food service through the health department. So now we have to bust through the floor. We have to have a plumber come in, bust through the floor, and put in a grease trap uh, to the tune of, I'd say, several thousand dollars. So that was a, another wonderful part of my day. And uh, basically, by the end of Monday, I was already done with this week. And it's still just Wednesday, and so far this is the only thing I've done that's put a smile on my face is walking into this radio station. <laughs> <laughs> so here I am. My week's bound to get better from here because it can't get any worse. It's going to go great. You got all you got all absolutely, five crappy absolutely. days in, yeah. in the last two, so let's just get the crap out of the way and move on to the good stuff. Exactly, exactly. Because I – well – my wife always looks forward to Fridays, which I tell her. It's like there's there's no such thing as Friday. I I have six Mondays in a week, and then I have a day where I think about Monday. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's, that's my week these days. Anyway, uh, moving on with, 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 less, with less, less bitching, actually. Uh, Scott Summit, uh, actor extraordinaire. Uh, well, is, I don't know about uh, the extraordinary. That's the you know I've had other adge- you know adjectives stuck to that uh, yeah, to yeah, that yeah. thing, but yeah, yeah. I, I have I have too in, in my acting. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. That's I guess that's acting is 
well. Well, that's good. You know, you're educating people. You're re- they're using more descriptive words to talk to, me to to describe how much they like or dislike what it is you do. Right. Yeah. But hopefully well, you're, the, doing it, well, you're doing it right. That's why like. you, know, you try only to get creative people to dislike your work. That exactly. way they're a little more, you know, it's not. <laughs> you're right. They'll use some creative sentence and answers. What the was that? You right. know, that's right. Sort you of, don't you don't just get a that was stupid because right. that's that's the uncreative response to my everything i do that's terrible no usually the stupid sometimes in, in case like in, in cases of comedy the stupider the better i'll be laughing and tears will be you know streaming down my face i'll be going that was so stupid that was so dumb but i can't breathe because it was there was just this brilliance to it and and, yeah. it's, and how simple and complex it was you know yeah, there, there, there's, there's a lot of stupid that can be funny. Uh, right. And then there's some stupid that can just be sad. This is true. So, you know, but, but you I know, mean, if well, Facebook taught us anything. Oh my God, no! Uh, uh, there's a lot of sad stupid out there. I, I find like I'm getting more IQ points the less and less I stay off my Facebook page. Oh yeah. You know, well, not that it's bad, but it's you know. It, my, Facebook. The, the thing about Facebook is, is it is a wonderful tool if properly used. Facebook is there so you can have it. It's, I use it because I, I have contacts in comedy. I have contacts in acting. I have contacts right. in radio. That's, that's the purpose. Good for getting in, in, you know, right. stuff out there, all your it's, information. It's, right. it's not so I can share my personal problems. That's what the radio shows. You're for. right. Okay, good. So this is like the this, audio version this, of Facebook. Uh, this yeah. is you're listening to Don Smith's yeah. Facebook page right now, everybody. <laughs> yep. Yeah, this is this is all the whiny stuff that most normal people put on Facebook. Right. I like it to go over the airwaves to get it to even more people. Yeah, spreading the misery one and <laughs> one 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 person at a time. Because then I put it, I upload it as a podcast and share the link on Facebook. All so right. Yeah, know, so then the, the response, so then the responsibility is on them. If they listen to that right. misery, then they're like, I'm going to sit here for right. an hour yeah, and listen is, to that. Yeah. If I do this, this is my <laughs> fault now. I'm responsible. Right. Exactly. The, there's a little writer at the bottom of the page that just says you click on this and you're responsible. Yeah. For well, it. there's yeah. always a disclaimer. With there's all always. Shows. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. Anymore. It's, it seems it, like any, they got to yeah, put. It's just, uh, it's understood. I think, right. Or any, anything I say, I, I should actually just. Anything I say, I should start with a disclaimer before I even say it. This may or may I not be true. I should have like a hat that, you know, that, that my opinions do not necessarily express my opinions. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot be held accountable for the things I say. That's right. What- <laughs> but, I mean, hey, you've got some great outlets like your podcast and your comedy and films and all that stuff where yeah. you can really – get that out there so so it's not just sitting inside festering well yeah. yeah if it was just sitting inside festering i'd have another ulcer mm. uh, yeah that's <laughs> you're and i'm working i've got plenty of them right now yeah you know, exactly so. but anyway this show's about you no no it's about let's about let's 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 transform this yeah. stuff into something you know more upbeat uh, let's uh, yeah, let's that's, just and meaning let's encourage let's, one another here well you know? it, it's called the life we don't want every part of the life to be disappointing exactly so. <laughs> no but, but sometimes we think key i think is to find the the there's parts of life like all right the job or the girlfriend or right. the next door neighbor find that turn it and 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 let that be the, well, the fuel. girlfriends are usually fine it's oh the they wives are that- no yeah 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 okay that's <laughs> a different know, ball game if there. you keep them as, as yeah. girlfriends and just let it stay there yeah but just usually- find it but just finding a, you know finding ways to take all that all that crap that we have to endure and and use it as, as gasoline, creative gasoline right, for right, the right. things that we're creating. You know, our comedy or a really good story or or something to, to to you know make people at least laugh. You know, they're looking at listen to your put in your stand up act or in a film and they're smiling and laughing because they're like, oh my gosh, that just happened. <laughs> yeah, 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 put the least. truth of, of in back in truth and comedy. You know. So I, I didn't. You, you've done a lot of acting. I've looked. I've looked yeah. over your IMDb page enough to say, "Oh, this is impressive," but I haven't really dug in. <laughs> that's okay. I've got it right here on my phone. Hey, if you well, want to, there like, you go. So that's uh, right. no, I carried it around and showed it to everybody. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, "Look, look." No. look kind of like me with my disclaimer. You just walk around exactly. With your well, it's, I'm just going to start wearing, wearing my acting resume as a big sandwich board <laughs> yeah, as I'm that's, walking that's downtown. Perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. So they're like, "That guy's an actor. I can hey, tell." Look at right? that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What has he been in? Hold on, come here. <laughs> no, that's where I'm like, look at the IMDb because like most of the stuff that I've that yeah. I've done is right up there. Yeah, I've been I've been very lucky. You yeah, know, very the, to, this, to do this a area lot. has actually been booming. Uh, that's what the I last have found. Like few I years. like I grew I grew up in Dayton, 
you know, and uh, many moons ago, you there were not as many, you know, there were something you could do if you were like wanting to be an actor or a creative type or something, there were always, you know, you could do who work with the podunk community theater over right. a year and work at your who yeah, yes and learn how to be on stage and work with other people. And that's a great training ground, you know, but then when it comes to like, if you're really interested in like production or creating a TV show or a film or something, then you have resources like DATV or, right. uh, when I was here, I played around at the Miami Valley Cable Council down south yeah, of town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, you know, I've, I've done I've done a couple auditions for people. That were no, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that so that's like that was a that's a great training ground to, to start. But um, eventually, you know, when I wasn't creating my own uh, opportunities, like uh, creating a uh, ran uh, a theater company of people that I. We we did stuff, you know, those silly little murder mystery dinner theater sort oh, yeah. of things. Did that for a while. That was fun to to learn how to to run your own business and and create your own opportunities. Right. And um, then eventually, I moved to moved to Los Angeles, uh, back to California, where I was born, and uh, tread you know tread out there. For for four years, you know, being an actor, where everybody out there where, is yeah, an actor, every, writer, or director, an actor, and they all have a screen. Play exactly, they want right, right. Because <laughs> yeah, nobody, because everybody's way, at the your Starbucks, gives you your gives yeah. you the bill with the screen play. Yeah, or his headshot, you <laughs> yeah. know, that sort of thing. Or everybody at everybody at Starbucks has got their heads down because they've they've uh, they're working on their right. on their latest opus, you know. So <laughs> it's it's really it's a and it's different world. It's really it's really a different world. You got to really be on your game to do that you know? yeah I'd, I'd imagine it's a it kind of like doing comedy out there or in new york city I, i'd imagine it's a whole different level and you really have to uh see that's that's why i'm happy to be here <laughs> well no dayton really is a is a good a good place to to start it yeah. really really is and if you want to apply your craft if you're an actor or a comedian or a filmmaker a uh, uh, musician, whatever it, whatever it is that you do, Dayton's a great place to start. Because uh, I just moved back into the area about two years ago. Now I think, and like you were saying, now there are so many yeah. opportunities that that I that weren't even here when uh, when I was coming up through the ranks, which are fantastic. You have you know you have people doing podcasts. You have groups like uh, Film Dayton. Yeah. Um, you have think tanks like the Collaboratory or, uh, oh, there's another one down on Fifth Street. Its name is escaping me. No, they're like a open work space, but there's like all of these. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I can't, I can't think of the name of it either. Yeah, forgive yeah, me. I know, I know you're there. About, yeah, yeah, but with uh, an- Andrew White, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. With uh, Indigo, Indigo Life. Yeah, Indigo yeah. Life. Yeah. And it's like it really like thrills me to death to see. You know, like wow, all this stuff is going is going on because Dayton's got such a rich history of technology and invention and creativity. You know, and it's really nice to to come back and see even more people like making independent films or doing their own um, their own projects or stuff. Right. So it's really, really a thrill. It, I, I started in community theater about fifteen. A little more than fifteen years ago, mm, yep. and uh, there was as far as uh, film. I mean, there were student films, and that's about it. <laughs> that every now and then you'll run it. You'd run into an indie project, but usually, I mean, I, I tried. I tried for a while while I was doing theater to try to try to transition over into filming, and there really just wasn't a whole lot there. Exactly. And if there was there, the chances of it actually getting seen through to the end of production were very slim exactly I'd, i've been ca- i'd been cast uh in a lot of different movies that either never started because they lost their funding there was one i was really looking forward to i was excited <clears throat> i was cast it was called hell's gate and it was going to be filming in uh, bobby Mackey's music world no oh, yeah yeah in yeah. northern kentucky right. oh i was so looking for because they were going to be filming there at night in one of the most haunted places in this area and I thought this is going to be so cool. That would be really. <laughs> and their their funding fell through, and because uh, I was cast in it, we were you know like weeks away, and all of a sudden nothing. They pulled the plug, and uh, it was done. I, I was I was heartbroken on that. I, I share your pain. 
insane, man. We've I think any of us who are like working as uh, as actors have worked that broad the project yeah. that almost made it or you know or or they shoot part of it and all of a sudden it falls apart you right. know and and that's really kind of sad but thankfully i mean at least in in uh, ohio with the with the the adopt when they adopted the the tax incentive legislation right. that has invited a lot of productions major like multi-million dollar productions and even even productions that may have you know, two, three, four million dollar budgets, which are which are not like huge blockbusters by you know Hollywood standards, but it's you, you're getting all of these people, uh, crew and 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 actors and and all these people uh, who are doing their projects right here in Ohio, and that's really exciting. Right. Yeah, that, that that that's exciting, but I, I wish that they would use more Ohio talent. Than just because a lot a lot of these big productions right. coming through and they're picking up Ohio people as extras, right? Well, but that, it's, you know, it's a it's a lot more difficult. It's it is difficult to get into those, right. and that's why I I I, I don't want to be an extra. <laughs> no, <laughs> and, I get and you. It's, it's hard to to not start there. But you have to start there. Yeah, you, know, yeah, you, have you have to, to learn. It, it's really a great. Ones. It's a great education. But, to yeah. learn how to act on a stage, you know, or yeah. act on it on, on a set, um, and kind of learn learn the ropes. You're not yeah. going to get a better education if you're if you have any inklings or like you really want to be an actor and you really want to be playing really good parts. Uh, you want to not you don't want to have like here's my my acting resume and you have extra 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 extra. You've done like. 35 40 50 60 extra parts right. that's not going to help you i mean it'll help you in an educational sense right but if you want to be an actor casting people don't want to see they're going to if it says extra extra oh he's an extra right. you know so you really have to do those you if you want to move forward you got to do things like working on that student film doing yeah. that indie and you're going to be doing these gigs that you're not going to get paid for her yeah maybe and, not and financially the great, thing, but... the great thing about indie film is you can you can get bigger roles you can get some because that's that's what i love is mm-hmm. i you know i don't really want to be an actor that stands around on a set in the background yeah, right you know right. I do. <laughs> but if you can get it even like if you get a good supporting role in a in a good indie yeah. you know or a principal role you know that's a great. That is also a great place to yeah. start. Um, if you're wanting to do, you, know, you, you, it's just like everybody. Like when you're working on an acting career, like I've been doing this for like way longer than I would really care to admit, but I'm dedicated to it because I love it. It's right. it's you got to love what you do, or else like anything, a job can become a oh, chore. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. but because it that that's that's the fun thing is every now and then you do run into an indie role that does pay exactly and it's like ah, i'd have done it for free but okay <laughs> right well that's also you know you come to a point you know where you maybe do like a lot of indie you do a lot of indie films and you can get some if you if you reframe sort of what i'm like i'm not getting paid for it right you know okay what well, you are getting paid you're getting, yeah, paid, you're getting in, paid in experience, in experience exposure. and then if you're yeah. really lucky you you get a great scene and the filmmaker gives you your footage, so you've got you've got some yeah, great got clips a for a reel, demo yeah. reel. So if you're wanting to like be the guy who's going to be playing the the monster or the hero or whatever whatever your type, you've got some great examples of show to show right. casting people or other directors and people that you've been networking through with all these projects. You know what it is that you do. We oh, just great. ran into the wall. I, I guess so. It sounds like we had a little <laughs> bit of a little bit of a. Yeah, it, it happens every now and then. That's I've actually okay. seen people run into the glass wall out there, just right, in, right into <laughs> the glass of the studio. Because they think the wall's still there. Hi there, everybody. <laughs> yeah, but, but anyway, no, I, I, kind, <laughs> I kind of fell out of the the film scene mm. for, for quite some time just because of the frustration and most things. You know, there were so many I was in that never got completed right. or some of them never even got started. And then about uh, well, about four years ago, I started uh, started performing stand-up. And I was able to get some connections back into film, and I started to realize, wow, there's a lot going on now. Exactly, that just was not here before. What, and the there weird, are so many really, yeah. I mean, really good uh, local independent filmmakers that are getting their stuff. And out in there. the region, you know, there are a lot of really good, uh, really great filmmakers. Like when since I've been back in Dayton, I got the opportunity to work with uh, two filmmakers. So I want to give a shout out to Joel. Levinson and his brother Stephen Levinson. They did this 
uh, had put together this production um, called Boy Band, which is going to be coming up. It's like a mockumentary sort of style comedy film, which was like, if it's comedy, I'm all over. Oh, I, I get cast for like a lot of comedy. And, um, there's, and it's fun to just be, you know, to get to play all sorts of, of silly roles like that. But yeah. you know, they these guys, those guys put together this production. They've got it in uh, post-production now going through the festival circuit, you know, and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll maybe see a local release at some time or a premiere or whatever, but it, it's, it's, it goes to show that, you know, if you can get your stuff together, you can get a great group of people and, and make it happen. And I mean, like we live, we live in an era now where the internet is at our, as at our fingertips. You've got YouTube, you've got Vimeo, You've got all of these opportunities where you can make a movie, you can do a short film and put it out there for people to see. Yeah. You know, that's the great, that's the great thing about it. And especially, you know, if you're sitting there and I, and I share your frustration, you know, when you're like, man, that didn't fall apart, that fell apart yeah. or the phone's not ringing, you know, or whatever. You kind of have to really like take a DIY ethic and yeah. make your own stuff. And that's well, yeah, great that, that, that yeah, you can that, do. That's that. the thing because there's, there's film filmmaking, independent filmmaking especially. That's that's a good way to learn most aspects of filmmaking. Exactly. Because you're you're going to wear many different hats. Even if you come in as an actor, you're cast in a role. You're going to be doing more than that. Right. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you may not be you know running the camera or, or doing makeup, but you're going to be doing more than acting. But then sometimes you're holding the boom mic while you're putting on the makeup yeah. and <laughs> acting in front of the camera that you're holding. So, yeah. you know, sometimes you do a run and gun and, and sometimes if you if you're doing it for long enough or you work with a lot of creative people in the area or through maybe like the like the the cinema department uh, at Wright State or whatever, right. you kind of get to network and, and work with other people who maybe they've got a great DSLR camera and they can, so you can say, Hey, I need a cinematographer, yeah. you know, for somebody who's a great writer who can say, well, I've got this idea, but can you help me write the script, you know, or, or, and, and when you start networking like that and building up, you know, a really, a really good, a nice long list of contacts of people that you can bring. Most oh, yeah. people really, they just want to work, Yep. you know, and, and if you've got that, then you can, you can make stuff happen, but you got to be dedicated. You have to, you know, you have to really, really want to see that. Yeah. That's uh, a lot different than what, <laughs> than what it used to be. This sure. is true. But I'm, I mean, uh, now people are making movies on their, on their iPhones. Yeah. For yeah, Pete's I think, sake. uh, Part of, uh, well, I had, had a movie that was uh, three knee deep that was out on Redbox for several. Oh months. yeah, working with, uh, with William, William Lee. Lee. Yeah. yeah, big big that, kudos for Mr. Lee. He's yeah. that guy hustles. Yeah, and he oh, gets yeah. his stuff done. Absolutely, so that's, he, uh, I, I have mad respect for. That he, he's in, he impressed me the first time I worked with him because I mean he he get, he gets it done. He he can work a little hot sometimes. <laughs> that's okay. You know, <laughs> but you work with him, but he get, he's dedicated. Uh, yeah, that's absolutely. a great thing. But he. Uh, uh, there, there was part of Three Knee Deep, which, like I said, was out on Redbox for I think three or four months, and there was parts of that shot with an iPhone because That's, his number, his number one, his main camera went down, and that was all that was all he had with him that he could do it at the time. And I mean, it you can't tell. No, that's that's the neat that's, thing about technology and why so much is able to get out there now is because I mean, it's we've all got the capability. And that's fantastic. Off. That's fantastic. Like, yeah. With uh, whenever my agent gives me uh, sends me auditions for various projects, I've I self tape on on my iPhone, on my my Android. Yeah, I have a setup in my house. I can put it in the tripod, turn the lights on, do the lights, and then boom, send it to my agent. And I've gotten booked uh, for her a lot of uh, film and television work, doing something that I'm taping out of my freaking bedroom. Right. You know, <laughs> right. but that's the brilliance of it. And that's if, if you really, if you really get savvy with the technology, uh, either as a filmmaker or an actor, or, you know, you, that's, that's really going to be some really important tools that you can have in your, in your toolbox to make things happen. Right. So if you know, there's, if there's like an, a something you learn about, they're shooting a movie in Indiana, you know, that you know, like, I'm looking for a guy who's like a big, huge bearded mountain man. And Don Smith says, I could play a big, huge bearded mountain man. Yeah. You know, you could take, you can tape yourself on your phone and send it 
Yeah. You know, and, and, and it, the, 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 the internet has really leveled the playing fields in many ways to, for actors and filmmakers to create their own stuff or to put themselves out there and aud- you know, audition for right. projects in other, in other parts of the country. It's amazing. Yeah. Most of that's been a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> no, I it. agree. <laughs> like, right. The technology itself is not, is not the issue. It's the, right. it's the intention right. it's, of the, it's use. the content. That's- exactly. <laughs> But like anything, like we say, like, you know, 90% of it is garbage and 10% of it is absolute, utter brilliant. Yeah, that, stuff. that is I, true. No, maybe, okay, maybe it's like a 60-40. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it depends yeah. on the day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to have to hit the comedy rundown real quick, and then we'll play a little song, take a little break. There are no shows on Sundays at either of the clubs because of the Super Bowl. Uh, I, I hope the Eagles win because I do not want to see the Patriots have another one. Uh, and I'm an Eagles fan anyway. I'm an Eagles <laughs> fan anyway. So there are two reasons that the Eagles have to win this Sunday. Uh, mostly because I, I want, I want, I always like when Tom Brady gets the smugness wiped right off his face. Exactly. It doesn't happen nearly often enough. And his underinflated <laughs> balls. You know. Yes. Yes. Him and his overinflated ego yeah. and underinflated balls. That <laughs> usually doesn't work that yeah, way. Exactly. <laughs> usually one is because of the other. But. Yes. Yes. I also do want to mention we have a couple of great shows coming up at Wiley's. On February 15th, we have the Valentine's Date for a Calls Comedy Show and Networking event. That's being put on by uh, uh, the uh, Sigma Tau Delta, uh, the Alpha Epsilon Tau, the chapter of Sigma Tau Delta, Delta here at Wright State University, the chapter, the, the Honor Society, a bunch of Greek letters. Uh, get out to see a bunch of Greek letters and a bunch of good comics. It's all Greek. <laughs> that to that me. one's going to be headlined by Nate Washington, who is, is just another one of my uh, local favorites. Awesome. Uh, also on March fifteenth is going to be the first ever the Life Radio Show presents uh, comedy show with uh, local favorite Adrian Cosby. That's going to be a podcast related show. It's not. It's going to be comics with podcasts. It's going to be a podcast. It's, yeah, it's not excellent. going to be just a podcast. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be a comedy show where all of the comedians our podcasters because adrian cosby has the uh, totally unrelated podcast with jay snyder uh there are going to be two guys from philly from the nerds with words podcast that are going to be there greg trout and i'm sorry i can't remember the other guy's name off hand i didn't write it down uh even though i booked him and that's half the reason i'm doing the show is because they've been wanting to come over and do a show here and also mike shea who does mike's talk mike talks funny on even tight entertainment podcast network he's going to be on the show and i'm going to be hosting because I, I think I have a podcast, too. I'll have to look into that, but I'm okay. pretty sure I do. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't have a podcast, get one. Right. No. I, I will get right. one just so I can keep the theme of the show going. There you go. Uh, a- anyway, as always, check out <laughs> Wiley'sComedy.com, DaytonFunnyBone.com for details and tickets to upcoming shows. And with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and play a little, uh, here's a surprise for you, uh, some Potter's Field. We will be back here shortly. <laughs> Tell me. 
Here's this week's comedy rundown brought to you by the legendary Wiley's Comedy Club at 101 Pine Street in Dayton's historic Oregon district. Call 224-JOKE or go to Wiley'sComedy.com for all the best in Dayton comedy. Thursday, February 8th, open mic at the Hookah Bazaar at 958 Patterson Road in Dayton. That show starts at 10 p.m. Sign-ups if you want stage time start at 930 also Thursday, February 8th, Gallagher is at Rockstar Pro Arena at 1106 East 3rd Street in Dayton. That show starts at 7 p.m. Thursday and Sunday, February 8th and February 11th, Ramon Garcia is at the Dayton Funny Bone at 88 Plum Street at the Green. Friday and Saturday, February 9th and 10th, Ricky Smiley is at the Dayton Funny Bone. Also on Friday and Saturday, February 9th and 10th, Terry McNeely is at Wiley's Comedy Club at 101 Pine Street in the Oregon District. And Sunday, February 11th, Wiley's Sunday Comics is back at Wiley's Comedy Club. That show starts at 8 p.m. That is it. I do want to mention we have a couple of great shows coming up at Wiley's. February 15th, we have the Valentine's Date for a Calls comedy show and networking event. And I'm excited for the March 15th first ever show, The Life Radio Show Presents, with local favorite Adrian Cosby. As always, check out Wiley'sComedy.com and DateFunnyBone.com for details and tickets to upcoming shows. There's a reason they call them Lazy Sundays. There's nothing better than sitting around and enjoying the comforts of a good book. But what book should that be? Well, every Sunday, Eventide brings you The Bookseller, hosted by Jessica Gillen. Each week, Jessica breaks down a different book and tells you everything you need to know before cracking it open and getting lost in a whole new world. Tune in every Sunday for The Bookseller with Jessica Gillen, brought to you by Eventide Entertainment. All right, we are back on the Life Radio Show. I'm your host, Don Smith. Uh, sitting in the studio, uh, still with me, Scott Summit. He didn't take off running. Not he's, yet. Uh, no. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's got staying power. It's we'll- <laughs> really difficult when you tie me to the chair, Don. Well, yeah, I have to do that. I have, I've had so many guests run out during the break. But thank you for removing the guest. <laughs> 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 well, I didn't want to, but you oh, know, know. you're going to have to it's talk, talk eventually. It, it is, is a talk, talk show. show, right? Uh, also joining us a little little early, but I, you know, he can come on in. Why not? Uh, Tyler Carson, good to be here. Yeah, good to have you here. We we were talking about Tennessee and uh, fam- <laughs> family down there, family and all yeah. the fun stuff. Yeah, and uh, we won't make fun of them because <clears> I have too much. Well, actually, I have enough family down there. I can make fun of them, and get right. away with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. That, that's all right. That's Luckily, all right. I avoid all the rural areas. You know, that's. Where it gets a little too, a little it's too close, a little dicey, <laughs> yeah, yeah. a little too close to the truth. There, are, there are non-rural areas in Tennessee. Well, I guess you gotta there's find like a couple, two or three cities. You know, there, two or three. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, do we want to hit a little news story? Do yeah, we wanna, do we want to start working news. on some news Why stories not? and see what we got here? Because uh, the first one, I, like I said, I mentioned during the break, the first one's going to be about Satanists. No, oh, okay. Because Sweet. why not start there? Uh, The road to hell may or may not be paved with good intentions, but a stretch of highway in Arizona is being maintained with the best of intentions by Satanists. Uh, The Satanic Temple of Arizona adopted a stretch of I-10 near Casa Grande and sent volunteers armed with pitchforks to pick up trash on the highway to, well, actually it's to Phoenix and Tucson, not really to hell, but uh, pretty close, (laughs) Uh, depending on which direction you're uh, you're driving. Uh, American America Curl. A member of the group named America, America. Curl. That's yeah, America Curl. All because right. if you're going to be a Satanist, <laughs> you might as well name yourself America Curl. God America bless America. Curl. Yep. Uh, said that she asked the state department, of, state department of transportation, if they could do the cleanup. She's she said, I, I just want to clean up a highway. Please give me a highway to clean up. And they said, fine. So yeah, I guess it's not that hard to uh, convince the state to let you clean up a highway. Yeah, as long as you're being you know, contributing really, members you com- of society, if you commit a minor yes. crime, they'll probably let you clean right. up a highway. I'll give you or, a nice, or you right. give you a nice outfit while you're doing it. Exactly, orange is the new black. Amen. Yes, think, right? yes, and and uh, Satanists are apparently the new road crew. No, so. I guess. <laughs> have you like uh, have you ever drove, driven north up to Michigan? There is actually a city up there called Hell. Hell, yes. I, I've seen pictures of I've seen, over yeah, from I've been yeah. with friends of mine. I've been talking about going over to up there yeah. to, you know, take a road trip up there just to say you've driven to Hell and back. Yeah, you know? yeah. Come, go, you've gone to Hell and back. Exactly. You were on the highway to Hell. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
take a hand basket with you, you know. <laughs> but uh, St- Stu DeHaan, that's another another name of one of these oh, guys. Oh, really? Stu, Stu DeHaan, one of the founding members of the Satanic Temple of Arizona, says, and I quote, uh, people have this perception that one side does the good stuff and the other side does the bad stuff. Uh, DeHaan also added that me- his members don't believe in the devil. They simply don't believe in God. Then how does that make them Satanists? I would think if you're a Satanist, you're, that, that, that whole thing is as you believe and, and worship satan oh, oh okay now you're just getting like really too esoteric and philosophical <laughs> see, and, you know. see if you just don't believe in god that doesn't make you a satanist that makes you an atheist but if you don't believe does that mean you're not here it could be could i be. don't know well i'm not god i know <laughs> hold on I'm, I'm grabbing a pen i gotta He's got to write that down. Got to write that down. Uh, just in case. Just in case any good <laughs> ideas actually pop into my head. Which I don't is know. Rare, write down which America, is rare, America I, Girl. I wanna, pretty I, good. I, America Curl. Yeah. America uh, Curl. I'm, I think I'm going to name my first kid that. America Curl. America yeah. Girl. Yeah. <laughs> Can, there you go. Do, uh, I mean, do, do, do Satanists, though, I mean, who's the godfather for America Curl? Not that you're a Satanist. Well, there couldn't but, uh, be a godfather because they don't is, believe. Is there a, you don't, believe, you don't believe in the yeah. first part. You just believe in the other part. There would be uh, a, maybe a dark lord. A father. dark, maybe. You know. <laughs> I could get behind that title. Yeah. Right. I'm, yeah, uh, can I be the dark lord you, father for you your go. kids? Yeah. I'm going to name America. my first, Get it for America girl. Yeah, America, America girl, girl and her brother, you dark, lord be her father. dark lord father. That's right. <laughs> and your little be a brother. Lot of other implications to right. that, actually. Your little brother, <laughs> Voldemort. Yeah. You know. <laughs> We don't mention his name. Oh, no, no, don't take his name in vain. Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's your name? Uh, well, I, I'm not allowed to mention it, so yeah. Um, yeah. just call me... Uh, Morty. You, just yeah. call me Morty. 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 Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's... Uh, I, was, I was just... That's the reason I put that in there, is I was kind of curious how just because they don't believe in God, they're automatically Satanists. See, guys, I, I don't see how you make that jump. Well, I mean, I guess if you, I guess if you believe in, if if you're just believe in extremes, you're either one or the other. Sure, you know, which I I don't like people that you have those, no. you know, those kind of uh, as the as the book will tell no you, there are at least fifty shades of gray. 50, in, yeah, yeah. Exactly. well, the big thing is what what is <laughs> yeah. that's the great good book. book. Yeah, that's the good book. Oh, that ain't even some people that don't believe. In <laughs> Satan, what are your what are your worship services look like at church? You know, do you, yeah. do you gather and let's praise n- nothing yes we're yeah. gonna worship All hail nothing yeah they just like <laughs> sit around eating ho-hos and yeah. bitch about how bad the world is yeah. I and mean, that sounds like regular church to yeah. me yeah, that's there you go right <laughs> sounds like congress You're right <laughs> <laughs> well i they're, they're probably saying this most of them uh, <laughs> uh, a texas chicken <laughs> which sounds delicious but i'm all about yeah, it so if you're ever down there remember to order the texas chicken yeah. A Texas chicken has received an honor a few, if any other, birds get a formal obituary. A paid death notice for Big Mama, a six-year-old, a six-year-old Rhode Island Red, appeared on Tuesday in the Eagle newspaper, which is based in Bryan, Texas. Uh, not many chickens deserve an obitu- obituary, but uh, she does, wrote Big Mama's human family. Uh, the obit says uh, Big Mama initially had been raised in an apartment in Houston. Her previous owners took took her to be euthanized in 2013. Why would you euthanize a chicken? Wouldn't you just go ahead and eat it? I mean, you have to kill it first, but that's right. not really euthanized. I, I well, would why, assume. <laughs> yep, you know. Sorry, we got to put the chicken down. I know. <laughs> gotta, put the chicken. Why, been, Daddy? Why? I've been know. told that so many times yeah. in my life. Put the chicken down. No, but I'm my not gosh. listening. Right. It's my weight problem. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It, it's usually already dead, though, when they tell you to put it down. I mean, yeah, that's true. Exactly. That's true. Like, well, I guess I could try to kill it. But again. when you're eating it by the bucket full, it's really hard to, you know, <clears throat> yeah. put that bucket that's down. That's true. That's right. true. But, but uh, the, the previous owners were taking their, taking the uh, big mama to be euthanized in 2013, but a compassionate veterinarian instead had had them relinquish relinquish their rights to the chicken so she could find a new home. She was adopted by Stephanie and Gregory Sword. And their two sons, who live in College Station, the chicken died in her sleep Sunday at her favorite chicken spot. At her favorite spot in the chicken coop. So, at her, I was gonna, I thought peace, you were going to say at her Mama. favorite chicken spot, Popeyes. Yeah, yeah Popeyes. Because oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not KFC. Right. <laughs> so, so a family, a family had this chicken. Mm. Send it in. They, 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 they brought it. They brought it in to be euthanized. And, 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 a, and a veterinarian said, "You know what." 
There's something special this about this chicken. chicken. Yeah. Is, yes, I cannot kill this I chicken. I cannot kill There's this chicken. something. <laughs> you must relinquish your no. rights to this chicken. It's like the chicken version of Let Charlotte's Web. Right, right. You know, that's some there's chicken. There's a spider, <laughs> spider has spelled out some chicken up there. And so know, another family web. says, you know what we need? We, we need, need to adopt chicken. this yes. old chicken. Yeah. And let it live out well, its it days. Was, it, it was only a couple years old because it's six years old when it died, and it just, just died. They were taking it oh, in 2013. Okay. Wow. What could have been wrong with that chicken? What that could have been so bad about that chicken that it needed to be euthanized at like two years old? It probably had an opposing viewpoint or yeah. something, you know. <laughs> So let's just, yeah. you know, you don't agree with us. You want to do what with yeah, our guns? Was, yeah, no, no, yeah, thank you. Yeah, this it, is yeah, Texas. It, it, it was an NRA <laughs> chicken, and some liberal family was oh, taking it in. They, we can't have this. I draw the line yeah, when draw, my chicken when my wants chicken guns. Wants to take my- but thank, thank goodness for that veterinarian who recognized that chicken's greatness yes, and gave yes. that chicken a second chance. Yep, and said Amen. You will, Amen, brother. You will have this chicken when you pry it from my cold it, dead hands. Don't tread on me. <laughs> oh, well, good, so good for that family. Good for that family yeah, for, exactly, for raising up. Exactly. You got to... You know, you got to, you got to, uh, you got to recognize gotta, the good. Recognize what's the lifespan of a chicken? Is uh, Apparently Big Mama's was six years. Okay. <laughs> so six I don't know years. if it's. <laughs> but it's like, is that like six years I mean, in human years or six years in chicken years? Yeah. You know, like how dogs, right, are, dogs right. and cats it, are like seven years. years. Did she live a nice long life or was she sickly and she died and they just wanted to give her a comfortable. Yeah. I don't know. And right, so euthanized. Yeah. Euthanized. Exactly. Yeah. But that was, that was like I'm sorry, almost Bill, five years ago. We have to take the chicken off life support now. Yeah. Mommy, where'd like, the chicken go? Yeah, sent, it was sent to a farm. Uh, Wait, it was sent uh, to a yeah, farm. You would, let's uh, let's go get some ice re- cream. It'll never know. be able to respond. Again. Oh boy, yeah, it's just it's just a shell. The chicken it formerly oh, was. Oh boy, <laughs> he's just kind of a vegetable. Wait, yeah, mm, delicious <laughs> chicken stew. <laughs> hey, would you like some more lunch, Billy? We need to have a talk. All right. Yes. See, I told tell you, you never know where these uh, news stories are going to lead. I never us. thought, I never thought I'd be discussing chicken in a podcast, Don. And that's yeah, why or, it always surprises Satan, me. Or, or Satan, Satan and chicken, yeah. and we're just ticking them off. Yeah, but, <laughs> right now. Again, it sounds yeah, this, sounds kind of like Thanksgiving. Really, I shouldn't call it the life. I should just call it the bucket list. Any weird thing you ever wanted to talk about on the radio, we're going to do. <laughs> that's you know. In fact, email the life one zero six nine at gmail dot com if you have any subject that we have not yet covered on the life radio show. We'll we'll be glad to talk we'll about add it. it on the list. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, New Lor- New Orleans city officials. See, we're, we're, we're going to New Orleans. Now. There we go. Yep. New Orleans city officials said on Thursday that more than 46 tons or 93,000 pounds of carnival, carnival beads were among 7.2 million pounds of trash pulled from clogged catch basins along a five block stretch of a downtown parade route. Wow. <laughs> Uh, once you hear a number like that, says uh, Danny Galloway, interim director of the city's Department of Public Works, uh, there's no going back. So we've got to do better. Uh, representative from the Public Works Department, which I, I don't understand this in the article. It just had a quote from the, the, the interim director of the uh, Department of, uh, of uh, City Works. Uh, it's city public works. And then right after that, they say a representative from the city of public works did not immediately respond to a request <laughs> for comment. Well, didn't we just get the comment? You could have skipped that comment about not getting a comment from the person that gave the comment. Okay, Don, again, another philosophical <laughs> conundrum. <laughs> I tend to go off on tangents, but it upsets me when people don't pay attention to their own articles. And then I have to try to do it and point out that they messed up. Uh, the, <laughs> anyway, the removal uh, was part of a four-month project in response to heavy flooding in the city in August. Uh, the effectiveness of the city's drainage system came under fire after an August 5th storm dumped six inches of rain, causing street flooding and underpasses to fill up. The cleanup efforts between late September and late January cleared about 15,000 of the city's 68,000 storm drains. The Mardi, Mardi, Mardi Gras beads were found along the St. Charles Avenue parade route. That, you know, that's crazy. Like, look, in my, in, I, I have had the, 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 in, in all of my travels, I've actually been able to be down in uh, go to New Orleans for uh, Fat Tuesday and Mardi Gras. So and some it, of those beats could have been. I, I'm I'm sure I'm responsible for a little bit of that, but it was uh, yeah. Well, you, we, said, right? Don't sell yourself short. A yeah, lot of well, thank you, thank <laughs> you. Sure yes, I'm responsible you. for yeah. <laughs> You will not believe what people do for those beads, yeah. though, during Mardi Gras. Like, 
You know, so I came back looking like a dinosaur, Mr. D. It was just, you know, <laughs> I had gotten so many of those beats. But <laughs> but um, it doesn't surprise me that all, after years and years and years of, you know, partying and debauchery yeah. like that, you know, you're going to you're gonna clog up a few drains. You know, that's not a surprise. Yeah, I would have thought right? Katrina took care of some of them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's let's put more plastic in the ocean so yeah. out there, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh well, my gosh, yeah, fish running around with Mardi Gras beads, you know, and the things those fish yeah. do for those beads. Yeah, Aquaman, you know? he's, yeah. he's a freak. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get. I mean, communicating with fish seems like yeah. a useful superpower, but uh, but not if you're just throwing Mardi Gras beads. <clears> at him. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, he was not. It was. He was like. He was cool kind of cool but it was like and if you ever watch like the old justice league you know super friends cartoons <laughs> you know like you know you're really kind of the, one of the more less useful superheroes yeah, yeah. out there i mean how many times did they use fish right you know exactly. it's, it's it's oh no the, the joker's doing whatever <laughs> yeah. okay guys well Aqu- you can sit you, yep. you sit, call this, one can sit right? this one out man uh, we call we'll yeah. wait for the next bp right. oil spill yeah. or something yeah. Yeah. He, he we'll come snag you but yeah he can't yeah. stay out of the water for very long you know yeah. he just dries up a little and bit. and then you had the, but i mean then again you had the one the then you had those twins yeah. remember those wonder twins oh the wonder twins and they could and like if you need a fish ding form a I'm a fish, a form of a bucket of water. Okay. <laughs> that sort of solves its own problem. But, yeah. But, yeah, but then nobody wants to carry around Aquaman's bucket of water. No, not at all. Because, you huh. know, just so just so he can stand there mm-hmm. and not be able to move. And those are off. those are some those are some like lesser known superheroes we've not seen in a Marvel film yet. Right. right. So, but just I'm, just you wait. I'm waiting for the Aquaman just film. You wait. They, they tried it with Kevin Costner and it didn't work. Oh my god. Water <laughs> water world. Yeah. That was, that was, that was I mean he had gills. That was kind of like Aquaman. Yeah. <laughs> and about as useless. Look, if you want to see a good gill movie, go see The Shade The Shape of Water. The Shape of Water. Yeah, that's a. I've Gear, seen it. You I've should see it. that. That's I've a, heard that's a people say Guillermo it's a del Toro. Oh, okay. If you've seen that's up for a bunch of Oscars this year. He does some pretty cool, well, wacky stuff. It is, but it's, it's like it's so cool. It's like this chick falls in love with like the creature from the Black Lagoon, but like in a Guillermo Guillermo del in Toro Guillermo. way. Right, right. Not, not, not in a not in a Fifty Shades of Grey way. No, but, uh, no, no, no. Right. And, that uh, that would have made that would have made that movie like way more interesting. <laughs> yeah. You know. Straight to video for that yeah. one, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's yeah. a, it'll be on Netflix. Now that we're day. talking about fish, you know, go yeah, see yeah, the, go yeah. see that. Yeah, since since we brought up Aquaman and and Waterworld, exactly. See, Aquaman would have thrived there, but that's one thing you really didn't see in that movie was fish. Not that at much all. Much water, no fish. Not at no, all. So are we? Is there? I don't know what the licensing we got to deal with, but I'm sensing a crossover. You know. Waterworld on top, and then the next movie is what was happening underneath. And yeah, there's got to be there's, there's there be had something. to been something going there's, on down there. The whole there world's because, water. Yeah, the whole world's water. Right, plot but I didn't twist: see any, yeah, the okay. dirt that Kevin Costner got, Aquaman led him to it. And that's the that's the connection. So he's like, "There's got to be land somewhere." Aquaman's like, "Okay, I'll, I'll take you to it." So yeah, would, would Aquaman? Uh, well, I guess he'd have to talk to the fish and right. find out if they like you know okay? was any place where they could exactly because if you want to find out some good place to go, just talk the to fish the locals. Really, do the fish really you know. know what land is? It's not like it's just a place they can't. Go. But then again, you open a philosoph- another philosophical <laughs> conundrum: the fish know the water, but do they know what's above? What's right, above? right. And do they believe that there is land above? Yeah. Do they know that? See, because I think I don't know. Some of them have been caught. This is true. So they've been to the other side. And if it's a catch and release, right, they come back, like, and then they're like people that got abducted by aliens. Exactly. Nobody believes. That. I don't know. I just couldn't breathe the whole time. So yeah, it was I pretty miserable. Know. And then they had this sharp thing in my mouth, and they threw I me back know. in the water. I don't yeah. know. How'd you get that hole in your lip? Oh, I gotta tell you. Oh, oh great grandpa's got another <laughs> fishing story to yeah. tell. <laughs> it was fifty years. I saw what was above yeah. the water line. Okay. Yep. So next time you see a worm swimming through the water. You better think twice you before you buy. Twice. Yeah, really. <laughs> Worms don't naturally occur in the water. There's a life lesson yep. there. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've discussed that on the show before is how fish get that, you know, how they don't get that worms are not a natural water creature. This thing looks. And, the, and that's because it's it night crawlers. You mean I to mean, tell me right you, now that you never walk and see some mysterious substance that clearly doesn't belong and go, you know what? I need to eat that. Well, I mean, I've driven past Taco Bell. 
that's pretty much the same thing. But, hey, you know, and only once in a while I've got a hook stuck in it. That's somebody's nose <laughs> yeah. ring that fell out. They run a pretty, a pretty clean <laughs> environment every and once in a while. Me, they've never jerked me through the drive-through window with it. <laughs> Not yet. Not, Not yet. yet. It's coming. I can yeah. feel it. <laughs> it's waiting out there for you. Yes, uh, that's good. that's gonna be like I'm that. that on, I'm hooked on Taco Bell. Oh boy, that's yeah. another. Oh. That's like another horror movie just <laughs> waiting to be made. So I'll do uh, all you indie filmmakers. There's a good idea yeah, out there. there. So, don't give all my good ideas away. I don't have. Well, many. that's be, but you can only have the idea, but you have to cast Don Smith right. in, the, right. in right. the leading right. role. Well, so. It doesn't even have to be a leading role. I'll take you know. I'll take a second. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be actor. second I'll, banana. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. I'll be like I'll be like burrito maker number two. <laughs> no, aim aim for the stars, Don. Aim for the stars. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's 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 true. But who would who would be the lead? Would it be the guy that gets pulled through the window? Because I would think that would be the if very we're first. Make it, yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's going to be like, and he should be like a really like a big huge guy because if, seeing somebody huge pull through a tiny little window at the, the very best. beginning yeah. of the movie oh, yeah, would be like definitely. the way to set the whole thing up exactly you know, you know yeah and, and it'd be like pieces of him still left outside and the then they start so, they come up with a brand new taco burrito hybrid with mystery meat on it uh, see we're writing would the, would right the, now would the taco would the taco bell fishing scheme would that be a catch and release program what if they caught if they pulled one out of their car and threw the window that was too small? Would they have no, to throw them? They would right toss it Are there any the regulations? Yeah, there would Are be there regu- any re- regulations on Taco Bell again? And a philosophical <laughs> conundrum. <laughs> and, See, no, this one's no good. Cause that, just, how does that, how does that work? Is that, are they actually pulling them in? Are they part of the burritos after that? Is that what? Cause, well, I we mean, have to work out a few plot we, yeah, points to that. We catch but, fish uh, for food. Are mm-hmm. they? Are, is the are, ta- they, are, are they the Taco Bell drive-through? Is Taco Bell luring you there so that you can become the next burrito? Uh, so what we're saying is, maybe you, 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 you know, eat I, the, I haven't eaten a the Taco Bell taco, in a while. You but. get the nose ring, and that's how they bring you in. So you eat enough Taco Bell, at some point you become what you are. What you eat. Uh, I I think well, we no, all. If, if you like, could see the size of some of our guts, I think you, that's a safe <laughs> assumption that we are what we eat. Yeah. So yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So uh, what, I'm, what I'm getting at is, when this show's over, are we make are we making a run and go? Get Gonna some run tacos? for the border. <laughs> <I mean, right. laughs> yep, yeah, man. No, I've got about we've ninety-nine covered, yeah, cents. We've so got- <laughs> I think I think I, I think we could all eat on that. So yeah, yeah, happen. Taco Bell. <laughs> I mean, especially if you know one of us gets sucked in through mm. the window. There we go. Then. I yeah. still think that'd be a great way to start a horror film. It, <laughs> Sucked up. Yeah. Into a taco. Or at very least an X-Files episode. At least you know? an X-Files. Yeah. 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 I was going to say at least. It's, it has to be a Taco Bell, though. Because McDonald's just wouldn't be the same. This is true. It, it, yeah, it's just because Taco Bell, That's that when you think about a horror movie, fast food place. It's got it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Got to be, because McDonald's is bad, but that's more of like a, a horror movie spoof. Right. If you if you're kind of like that's the kinda, scary, kinda scary movie, kind of like scary you know. movie yeah. meets Good Burger. Right. You know? <laughs> that's I, McDonald's. Yeah, if they paid me. me enough, I'd do that movie. Yeah. 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 That'd be cool. Taco Bell is like it. That's like it's <laughs> like that level of of horror for me. I mean, how many other fast food restaurants do you show up at two a.m. after? After a bender. After exactly, you know, a little exactly. too much. Yeah. Um, I drove backwards uh, through it through. House. through. Oh my God! Don't All right, <laughs> listen. Waffle House. Do not. I love Waffle you, House. Yeah, I was going to say we're we're not trashing Waffle House. Here. Oh, oh my I'm God! Not okay. I'm saying if if you I'm have not I've done this, I've never been there sober. Is my- <laughs> this? The, have you? Well, there, yeah. Have you, <laughs> if you've ever gone to a Waffle House, if you ever played the Waffle House songs on the jukebox, classic. Have you have? Have you Cla- done that? Work, work if of you art. have not, that is like the most brilliant marketing campaign ever. A friend Do they of mine. Still have them? Do they oh, they're still, they're still on there. there. Oh, yeah. I, I just awesome. went to one and had like the brand new jukebox, which wasn't really a jukebox. Oh, yeah. it, uh, nope, right, still on there. The good old Waffle House. Yeah, a friend of mine uh, introduced me to all of those, and like I had so many quarters when I had to play every Waffle House song on there, and that was like that was like the D list of country western music, <laughs> but it was brilliant, you know, because yeah. you're like. You're I mean, you're in a waffle. How house, many love ballads do you get to a uh, country lady. ham and yeah. and uh, hash browns? You know, <laughs> covered and covered. <laughs> Not enough. I don't know. <laughs> and up next is our hit, "Capped, Smothered, and Covered." There you by, go. Uh, the venerable Dolly Parton. There we gentlemen. go. 
Waffle yeah, House. See, that's the, the, Waffle the, House, the family, Waffle thank House you. horror movie. That's the name of it. Is smothered and chunked. That's <laughs> smothered and chunked. <laughs> smothered and. Uh, we're writing. Are you writing these uh, down, Don? Absolutely. We've got, it's a, <laughs> I, I think I just got an, e- an email from Netflix. Uh, they're excellent. Wanting to, excellent. They're great. We're on. Going to yeah. have a awesome. going to have a series on there. Okay, uh, the, the, I'm being reminded that the FCC is telling me to take a break. I'm not sure if that's because of the material <laughs> no, because or because it's just that time of the show. So I'm going to go ahead and take a break on here. We will be back here shortly. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to the Life Podcast. Check us out on Eventide Entertainment's Podcast Network. Remember, if you want to listen live, we're on Wednesdays from noon to 2 p.m. on WWSU 106.9 FM, or you can always stream the show live at WWSU1069.org. If you have suggestions or comments for the show, feel free to email us at thelife1069 at gmail.com. Overwhelms me. A brutal presence. Overwhelms me. This is all the whiny stuff that most normal people put on Facebook. Right. I like it to go over the airwaves.